Hello, this is Xbox Hoya, and this is the bonus village from my time with the Assault Shield. And I know we're a few days shy of Wednesday, but I had to shuffle a few things around in my schedule. And as ever, the videos on Xbox Ahoy, they come first, so if I'm behind, I'll catch up, make sure those videos get out, and then the bonus footage, that comes later. So here we are, we're, we're playing catch up, but it's fine. I think I might change up the day I put these out, actually. Uh, Wednesday isn't really working for me at the minute. It always seems to be right in the middle of the sort of the final crunch for the, uh, the main videos that week. So having to do the bonus sort of whilst I'm, I'm mid-crunch is a bit of an interference, so I might, uh, I might change day. But we'll see how that pans out. It hasn't really helped that I spent a fair amount of time last week redeveloping my website. Still not live yet, but I do plan for a, a new version of XboxAhoy.com to go live within a few weeks. And the new version will be uh, self-updating, if that makes any sense. Anyway, you'll, you'll see what the new site's like once it goes live. It's nothing too exciting, it's just, it's just a place for me to aggregate my content and to sort of list what I've been up to. Also, as part of this effort into my web presence, I've started a development blog. It's actually a Tumblr blog, because I, I, I really like the, uh, the Tumblr dashboard. It's, um, it's high speed, low drag, and I can, I can just sort of share screenshots and, and previews of stuff really, really simply. So I like that. I'm not sure how cool Tumblr is, but it, it works for my needs, and like I say, it's quick. Uh, in case you're wondering, my username on Tumblr is uh, devblogahoy. I'll put a link to it in the description. I do want to try and get into the habit of posting, you know, regular updates on what I'm working on. I can't promise that it'll be interesting. Uh, it might just be, you know, random screenshots of Vegas and stuff like that. But if you're interested in the behind the scenes stuff, I do want to make it a habit to regularly update on that. Anyway, enough talking about stuff. Let's get on with the questions. Maurizio Bro says, Stu, why did you skip the riot shield for your MW2 guide? Uh, long story short, I ran out of time. I mean, the AK-47 guide, the, the last one. I think I released that video on the day before Black Ops came out. So I was literally on the limit of uh, fitting within the, uh, the title's year. As for why I didn't cover it earlier on, I guess I was putting it off, because it's... I don't know. I mean, the Riot Shield's brilliant as a weapon compared to the Assault Shield from Black Ops 2, but back then, I don't know. I think, I'd, I think I preferred to focus on the actual proper weapons. So yes, it was eventually left undone. And of course, for Modern Warfare 3, when it returned, uh, I, I did do an elite guide for the Riot Shield, but that's not on my channel. Mean Beanie 85 says, uh, Were you not able to obtain a final kill cam with the Assault Shield, Stu? I think I recorded my entire experience with the Shield, from uh, pretty much zero kills to, to getting it gold. And, I, you know, I didn't get a single uh, final kill cam with it. Not once. I came achingly close a couple of times, like I'd have someone lined up for a bash and then somebody else would pilfer the final kill from me. That happened far too often, but I, I just didn't get a kill cam. Now, I did think, all right, Stu, you could go into a free-for-all match, get 29 kills and then finish off for the shield, get a kill cam, do it that way. I think the only time I've done that is with the javelin for Modern Warfare 2. Over the course of recording, naturally didn't have a single kill cam, so I went into a free-for-all. I think I used the UMP-45, it was on Afghan, I remember it pretty well, just tore up shop, got 29 kills, and then launched a bunch of javelins, and eventually got a kill with it and won the match. Now, I could have done something very similar with the Assault Shield, but you know what, I just, I didn't want to touch the damn thing. So yeah, getting it gold was good enough for me, never mind the kill cam. Blackout0424 says, Hey Stu, how come you didn't record any footage of you using a deployed Assault Shield? A uh, simple answer, there aren't really any challenges for deploying the shield. And, well, my principal goal was to get the shield gold so I could stop using it. So for most of my time with it, I was, I was going for bash kills. And that's the thing, I mean, it's not really a weapon when you deploy it on the ground, it's a bit of cover. I'd be getting kills with other weapons, and uh, I know, I know, I probably should have recorded more with the deployed shield, but... Well, again, I, I didn't really want to spend more time with the shield than I had to. The Superbetic asks, Stu, what are your thoughts on the death penalty, specifically in terms of captured terrorists? Uh, generally against the death penalty, uh, except in cases perhaps of last resort. Although really, in any sort of modern, civilised judicial system, there, there shouldn't really be any space for such a terminal option. There are very few arguments that are sound for the death penalty outside of just animalistic revenge, and that's not the purpose of a justice system. 
and even in cases where you know rehabilitation is impossible i mean it turns out that it's cheaper to keep a, a prisoner for life than it is to to go through the necessary paperwork to execute them as far as captured terrorists are concerned there really shouldn't be any crimes that fall outside the conventional judicial system and if they do well the system is clearly deficient in some way i suppose you know international laws and global terrorism that kind of muddies the water a little bit but to sequester somebody in guantanamo bay without trial without judicial process is it's pretty barbaric Ugh, political questions anyway killing people bad Cookie the Epic says, uh, Stu, have you ever considered making a new channel to showcase some smaller or big but PC only PC games? Maybe call the channel PC Ahoy or something like that. You could start a Euro Truck Simulator 2 series there. Short answer, no. It's a terrible idea. To expand on that, starting a new channel, not only do I go from 300,000 subscribers to none, I'd also have to get a new channel partnered, I'd have to renegotiate a contract which might have a less favourable CPM, which means I'll get paid less, and all for the net result of having another platform name in my channel name, which is something that I don't particularly want to do anymore. If I could, if I could take a mulligan, I would not have Xbox in my channel name. I don't know what I'd be. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That's the thing, though. Names aren't important. If I wanted to post PC games on my main channel, I could. In fact, I already have. I've posted um, Euro Truck Simulator 2 on there. And, well, that was it. Nothing bad happened. Everything was fine. And I can do that again in the future. So, I might very well cover some PC games on Xbox Ahoy. Of course, one thing you might notice is that I might change up my intro a bit. I might not say, hello, this is Xbox Ahoy. Instead, I might go with the cold openings, like I did for the worst Xbox uh, 360 games video. You know, uh, no, no intro, just start right in the meat of it. I think I might lean on my brand more as a symbol as well. Instead of having the words Xbox Ahoy presents, I'll just, you know, I'll show the symbol. The XA genome device, if you want to call it that. Anyway, to summarise, main channel remains main channel, just for reasons of simplicity. Forgive me if I'm posting PC games on a channel that has Xbox in their name, it really doesn't matter. Peter Smith asks, after making a 10 worst 360 games, are you planning on making a top 10 360 games video? Uh, probably not in the top 10 format, uh, for the simple reason that if I was to do a top 10 rundown of the highest critically rated games on Metacritic for the Xbox 360 of all time, the top game would be Grand Theft Auto 4. And I can just imagine the arguments in the comments. I like GTA 4, I actually do think it's a pretty good game. But whether it's the best game on the Xbox, now that's a point that is debatable. Anyway, as we all know, Metacritic pretty flawed when it comes to rating games, but the entire concept of rating a, a polydimensional interactive experience on a one-dimensional scale is absolutely absurd. It's impossible. So I think for the worst games ever, it's actually quite interesting to see what came out of the bottom. I mean, is Self-Defense Training Camp really the worst Xbox 360 game? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's the worst one I've ever played. Of the set that I played, I, I think I despise Leisure Suit Larry the most. But again, it, it's not easy to compare games like that on a linear scale, it just doesn't work. But at least with the worst games ever, there's, just, there's kind of a perverse interest in what could possibly score so low. With the best games, however, people are more emotionally invested, and I- oh, the arguments, the arguments, oh no. But, I could very well do a counterpart for the highlights of the Xbox 360. But I wouldn't do it in a top 10 list, I'd probably do it in a chronological order. Maybe I could, you know, recant some of the highlights, start from the launch of the Xbox 360, talk about, you know, the games that were released over its lifespan, the highlights, and, uh, you know, stuff like that. That could work, I think, and that would be less controversial. Whether I actually get around to doing that or not, I don't know, but we'll see, we'll see. Vastroid asks, do you or have you watched anime? Yes, I have. Well, what, you want, you want more? All right, all right, brief rundown of my anime watching history. Um, uh, in some time in the 90s, I watched Akira. There you go. Since then, I've seen a lot of Miyazaki films. I've seen Perfect Blue, I've seen Paprika. I've watched a few sort of anime series. What have I watched? Um, oh, I like, I like Helsing. I watched the uh, the first series of that and some of the OVAs as well, and I have also watched Cowboy Bebop. I think that is about the extent of my experience with anime. I am currently trying to persuade the girlfriend to watch Ghost in the Shell on, on Netflix, because I, I haven't seen that, but I would like to see it, and I, I will watch it at some point. 
Uh, Raimundo Martinez says, Stu, what weapons from past COD games would you like to see back in Call of Duty Ghosts? You know, I think the G3, I think that's due a return. I mean, it is Cold War era, but you never know. I'd like to see some classic battle rifles as well, maybe a Mozzie in the Gant or a Lee Enfield, something like that. And I'd still like to see a proper rendition of the, uh, the L85. We've had the L86, you know, a couple of times now, but it'd be nice if we, we had the assault rifle instead. Caleb Hendrickson says, Stu, have you ever regretted doing this as your job? Well, one of the good things about being self-employed is if you ever get sick of it, you can fire yourself without any messy paperwork. I mean, if I was really sick of doing this YouTube lark, I'd, well, I'd go out and get a real job. I mean, I do have the skills to pay the bills, after all. But no, it turns out I rather like being, uh, you know, independent. Choosing your own projects, choosing your own hours, and otherwise just, you know, having the power of self-determination. It's nice, it's nice, it suits me well, and uh, I hope I can do it for a long time. Deathwish Kunai says, Hi, question to Stu or anyone. I keep seeing a black camo with orange spots in the past few guns that Stu has been using. Can't anyone tell me what is that camo and how to get it, please? Thanks. Uh, that is the Digital CE camouflage, or the Collector's Edition. It came with the Hardened Edition and the Prestige Edition of the game. Uh, and I, I do love using it, for the simple reason, whenever I do, there are loads of comments in the comment section saying, Oh, what's that camo? How'd you get that camo? What is that camo? And I ha <laughs> it's an exclusive camo. Only I may use the exclusive camo. Well, or anyone who wasted money on the, uh, the special editions, anyway. Uh, we Ahoy says, Hey Stu, what is your favourite ice cream flavour? Uh, probably pistachio. I do like pistachio. Failing that, maybe uh, mint choc chip. Ragnar asks, hello Stuart, when it comes to hot dogs, ketchup or mustard? I say, why not both? Actually, if we're talking hot dog toppings, the only essential one for me would be onions. The Kinfing asks, hey Stu, I'm not hating or nothing like that, but a days ago I read that you are tired of doing the video so far. I did actually know that your gameplay wasn't that good today, is there something wrong? Hey now, I didn't say I was tired of doing the videos, I said I was looking forward to finishing. That's a world of difference. Now, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't mind a bit of a breather, I could certainly do with a holiday. But we're in the final furlong now, things are coming together, and within a couple of months at least I should be done, which would be nice. As for the gameplay on the grip video, I think I rather spoiled you with the ACOG um, attachment guide, because I recorded altogether far too much gameplay with the ACOG. And that meant I basically I had like at least a triple with every single reticle. With the grip, I only recorded um, maybe, I think I recorded five or six games. Which is, you know, it's enough to get some reasonably good clips. But the more I record, well, the better the standard of clip I get. But the trouble is, the more I record, the longer it takes me to, to do the video. Because for every hour that I play, I've got to review the hour's worth of footage, which it quickly mounts up. So I, I try and find a balance, you know, between recording too much and not having good enough gameplay. Nathan75474 asks, Will you make a video on your cats against you? I think I might very well do this, actually. Uh, once I finish the Black Ops 2 series, I'm going to take a bit of a breather from video games and that sort of thing, but I am going to do a cat video for this channel. I'm thinking I might do, like, um, an Attenborough parody, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll have a bit of fun. I'll, I'll record my cats and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll make it a proper video, do some graphics for it. Should be a nice breather. Makes a nice change from doing Black Ops guides. And I think I need something to do immediately after I finish. Because I find if I, if I go cold turkey and I stop making videos entirely, if I stop work, it's weird. After doing something for 40 weeks, you just get this kind of empty feeling. It's, it's almost as if you've been fired, you've been made unemployed. Like you had this purpose and now it's gone. So I think I will do it. I'll do a silly cat video as a follow-on from the series. Just because, you know, it's something to do, something to keep me busy and it's, it could be a fun project. And I, I suppose it's kind of a fan service as well. Just, you know, sort of revealing a glimmer of my, my personal life. So yeah, expect something silly to surface some, sometime this summer, I think. Samuel Ivan H says, So, you got your first diamond weapons now? I do indeed. I actually recorded with the hammer this weekend, and I finished that off, got it gold and diamond, because I've, I've done all of the LMGs now, which is good. And rest assured, now that I have diamond camo, I'll be using it as often as possible. So all of the attachment guides... You can expect to see diamond camo as I unlock it. I know, I know, it's gaudy, but 
by heck it's been a long road getting there so I'm going to use it. I must have taken the longest road to get in diamond though. I have 29 gold guns and I've only just unlocked diamond. So yeah, all of the all of the challenges come in now. I mean, I've got the launchers coming up next and then I've got the handguns and the SMGs and then the specials. Yeah, I, I've most of the challenges are like one or two guns away. It's only the assault rifles that I need four. So yeah, that's that's one fringe benefit of doing this series. Uh, all the sort of the meta game rewards for Black Ops 2, they're coming in. I am quite looking forward to having, you know, one last big recording session with the AN-94. Getting it gold, diamond, and then earning the sort of every mastery challenge player card. Should be a pretty rewarding day, and the AN-94 is a good weapon, which, which should feel pretty good, man. I remember playing with the AK-47 on the MW2 guide. I just played a solid day of free-for-all with the AK-47, and oh, I was glorious. I was unstoppable. I was a master of every weapon. That's probably one of my fondest memories of Modern Warfare 2, was finishing the series and just just having a, a brilliant session. And having, having a great time of it as well. That's the last time I enjoyed Modern Warfare 2. I haven't really played it since. So yeah, hopefully the, uh, the experience with the end of the Black Ops 2 series should be similar. In any case, I, I know I'll be, I'll be pleased to finish. It's always nice to finish a long project. Anyway, we're coming to the end of the Assault Shield bonus clips. I hope you enjoyed all the bashes. Coming up this week on Friday, we have the uh, the Chicom, the Chicom CQB guide, and then on the Sunday we've got the Rapid Fire guide as well. I will have the KSG bonus footage for you as, as well at some point, although I doubt it will be on Wednesday. I'll probably push it back a couple of days, maybe on Friday. I think I might record the bonus after I've finished the week's videos, instead of during, because it, it, it is kind of an interruption. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, farewell.